Okay, and we are here with uh, Roy S. Neuberger. Roy S. Neuberger. Okay, who is the author of three uh, books, currently uh, one out with uh, uh, Jonathan Davis, uh, printing press from Central Park to Sinai, we have here. We have uh, also um, your book out with Feldheim 2020 Vision, uh, which you can see in the poster in front of us. And also then you have another one out with... Uh, Israel Bookshop called uh, World Storm. Um, as an intro, you also uh, have a very interesting background, which is really what uh, your book from Central Park to Sinai uh, speaks about, uh, about your um, journey that you had as uh, f from, as you described to me, a um, very high-class neighborhood in Central Park to uh, becoming, you know, religious with your family and moving into a religious neighborhood and starting that uh, spiritual life. Uh, why don't you fill me in on how that uh, all happened and took place? Okay, thanks a lot, Yossi. The, the first book, as you mentioned, is called From Central Park to Sinai. So I grew up in Manhattan, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, in a very classy, affluent neighborhood on Fifth Avenue, and that's the you know that's the lifestyle we had, and it was uh, with two Jewish parents, but a totally totally secular home, and um, we lived by uh, what should I say American uh, standards, and American holidays and so on, and not one atom of Torah, of Yiddishkeit in our life. But uh, a Jew is a Jew. A Jew has a pintle yid. And from a very early age, and I mean early, four, five, six, seven years old, I just, I, 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 there was something wrong with it. There was something wrong with it. At that young age, obviously, you know, you don't have the, the words, the, 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 the expressions, the understanding to figure out what's wrong. I had no clue what's wrong. But my, from way deep inside me, obviously, that Jewish soul told me, you know, you're not living the right way of life. So for the first 30 years of my life, I was on a, a – it, it wasn't just an abstract, uh, you know, quest. It was a, a, a – a, a, it, it was active. You were, you were looking for something. I, I needed something. I, I, I knew if I didn't find whatever I was looking for – I just I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't I wasn't going to make it. It was a life and death search. Um, so I looked, you know, everywhere I could think of. I thought, you know, great literature or hiking in the wilderness or political activism, you know, in high school and college and so on. Um, and then and then after a while, it went into um, um, it went into looking into you know Buddhism, Hinduism. Yeah. And 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 uh, you know uh, Western the religion of Rome and so on, and then about the age of thirty, every minute you know Hashem was helping us. We didn't know there is a Hashem, but He's helping us, and all these unbelievable things happen. I met my wife in high school. Then from then on, and we got married when I, when we were both in college at the University of Michigan. Then the search was together. Thank God we were able to do it together, and Hashem helped us. But you know, life became so really impossible we had to keep looking and looking and looking and finally at about the age of 30 when it's apparent we went through every single way of life we could think of and we just knew we we didn't find it then we were totally drained out and at that moment we were living in the mid hudson valley uh in a town called cornwall and hudson and there was nothing left, and we were just totally drained and, I guess, empty inside. We realized we've tried everything, and there is nothing. And then uh, at that moment, and nothing is an accident in life, uh, we met Rabbi Esther Young Rice. She came to speak in Newburgh, New York, which was about 10 miles from where we lived. We went there to hear her speak, and uh, that was the first time in my life I was ever... In a, in, a, in, a, in a shul, a synagogue, first time I ever willingly put a yarmulke on my head. In my life, first time I ever willingly associated with other Jews. 
And uh, we walked into that room, and, um, you know, we heard her say, this was in 1974, you are a Jew. We stood at, at Mount Sinai. We have a Torah. God gave us a way of life. And uh, we come from kings and prophets. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, how come we never heard this before? 30 years old, we're Jewish, and we never heard any of this stuff before. And then we started going to her classes, and then we went to Israel with her. A few months later, we had the first Shabbos of our lives in Israel. We lived like Jews for two weeks. And we got back to America, and we looked at our surroundings, Cornwall and Hudson. We're out of here. We can't live like this anymore. Our oldest daughter was five years old. She was about to go to Catholic school in Newburgh, New York. We moved. It's funny you have the connection to a place called Newburgh. New yeah, I know. It's, it's, people say, like, how, what, any, I don't know how it happened, but it, it, it is funny. Anyway, we moved to the community in Long Island where Reveson Young Rice's husband was the rabbi in North Woodmere <clears throat> instead of going to the Catholic school in Newburgh, New York. Our daughter went to, was enrolled in first grade in Torah Academy for girls in Far Rockaway. Wow, you know, unbelievable. They what, didn't, what, what a change. That was what like. a change. It's crazy. And they didn't want to let her in. She didn't know anything. You know, all these little girls, these five-year-old girls, they know so much already. She didn't know a thing. But Rebison Young Rice insisted. They let her in. Thank God by the time that little girl graduated from high school. She was the valedictorian of her class. Today she lives in Israel. She has a beautiful family. And that's when the Odyssey began and we just jumped into the uh, ocean of Torah mm -hmm. and we started swimming. And that's how it all began. And it took off from there. It took off. So, uh, <coughs> you first started writing your class, uh, first book over here, which is called From Central Park to Sinai, uh, Jonathan Davis Publications. And this book really uh, details your story. That is correct. From A to Z, how right. it happened, how, you know, from where it started to, to how it ended. And you yeah. even have a forward, the intro is here from uh, Robinson Young Rice from, you know, just, I yeah. imagine your connection over there is that strong that you just... Very strong. And in addition, our second daughter, who was three years old at the time we moved... Uh, became her daughter-in-law. Oh, So wow. she's also Rebbitz and Young Rice now, and she has become a speaker and a teacher. She's an amazing girl. And then, thank God, after we moved, had a new life, we had, th we had three more children, because up to that time, we had no hope in life. We really didn't want to have a big family, but when we saw... There was a purpose and there was something there. Exactly. You could build a real home. You could have values. You could have happiness. You could have something to pass on to your children. That's when we decided we wanted to have a bigger family. And Hashem was good to us. And uh, thank God we have wonderful ch children. And our children now uh, have become you know, our teachers. We have, thank God they are... They're, 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 they're wonderful children who, who uh, know much more than their parents, and they, and they, and they teach us. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. So another book that you have out, which um, is called 2020 Vision, a uh, big topic in today's uh, time is uh, end-of-the-world scenarios, uh, world coming, climatic uh, events, you know, things that just are... You know, uh, you know. After 9/11, everyone's thinking about what's going to be with the world, and that's what this book addresses. It, it's a that's novel right. that you uh, created, which uh, basically puts a scenario in the year 2020. That is correct. Uh, of uh, <clears throat> a world coming to complete chaos, uh, and you end off this whole story with the ultimate revelation of of Mashiach. Tell me about this. Yeah. So. That's the time we're living in. The point is, I think, anybody who thinks today realizes we are living in a world that is becoming apparently increasingly chaotic, frightening, and, and, and um, not only that, but very uh, anti-Semitic world. Um, we find that Israel and Jewish people people around the world are becoming increasingly, once again, the target. And I, I think the entire world is on edge now. Everybody's waiting for something to happen. 
and um, nobody knows exactly what it is. So, how do you live in such a world? You need, I believe, some strategy, some framework to be able to deal with it. Otherwise, a person could go crazy from it. 100%.